In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I built this fantasy diorama. A friend of mine is celebrating his birthday soon, and since we often play D&D together, I wanted to give him something related to that. When we play, he always volunteers to be the GM, and since the GM has to roll the dice real, really often, I wanted to make him a dice tower. But since I think it's a bit boring to just 3D print a dice tower and that's it, I wanted to combine it with a diorama. So to start, I made a rough sketch to visualize my ideas a bit. And he, for the tower itself, I decided to make an abandoned observatory which stands on a hill and is slowly taken over by nature. So this is, here's the hill and, and that's the, the observatory and, and, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm not that good on painter. So what I did next is I went onto Thingiverse and downloaded this staircase right here because I need it for the inside and you will find the link to this in the video description. Then I downloaded the staircase and imported it into Blender and luckily I'm better at 3D modeling than drawing. So I modeled the tower around the staircase and if you look really closely I think you can see one or other similarity between those two things. However, I decided to make two windows, one here and one here. Then I made a little entrance and behind the entrance there's this little wall so when the dice rolls down the staircase it bumps against the wall and rolls out the entrance. For the dome I decided to leave this open so you can put the dice in and it rolls down the staircase. And to finish the tower I added these two wooden rings that hold the whole structure together. So all in all, I'm pretty happy how the 3D model turned out. That means I just have to print it. So here I got the printed washed in cured tower. I made this on my Anycubic Photon Mono. And I also printed a little base on my Anycubic Predator to put the tower on. But since this is pretty boring, just a white base, I want to fill it with plaster and then I can press the tower in so I got the negative mold of the tower. Then I can model the landscape right here and then just put the tower back on and it will fit perfectly. So let's continue by mixing up the plaster and making the negative mold. So the plaster is dried now and I can remove the tower. And so now I got a pretty good negative mold that I can work with. So I'm cleaning that up and letting this sit for a bit longer. So the plaster is dry now, what means that I can start painting the base and painting the tower. So both are painted, I gave the base a brown base coat and the tower a grey base coat. And while the tower is still drying, the paint on the base is already dry. So I want to continue by highlighting the base a bit. I don't know if you were able to see it through the grass, but if so, I think it will look pretty cool. So give it a shot and... Let's go. For the highlights I used some lighter brown and some ochre to better bring out the peaks and valleys. So since the base is painted, dried and highlighted, I'm continuing by adding some grass. Here I used some regular grass flocking. It's meant for summer meadows, but it's my favorite grass, so that's why I use it in almost every diorama. For the small path through the entrance, I used some of my own mixture. It's made out of different flockings, gravels and dirt, and I think it gives the stone a really natural appearance. So now the tower is dry, that means I can continue by giving it a really dark gray wash, so that you can see the detail better and it doesn't look that flat. For the wash I simply mix the same grey paint with a little bit of black and a lot of water and brush it over the tower. Between the stones the mixture sticks and darkens the area while on the smooth surfaces it simply runs off. I painted the wooden rings off cam brown and washed them with the same method. To highlight them I protected the surrounding stones with masking tape but to avoid damaging the paint I used the tape with the sticky side facing out. To highlight the wood I used some ochre. Last but not least I greened the tower's lowest set of stones with the same flocking since the tower has been standing in the nature for many decades and so the earth is slowly taking back what once belongs to her. So the tower is done so far, that means I can continue by making the roof. 
For the dome I took a metallic night blue, originally I wanted to use a green but unfortunately this was sold out at my local craft store which is why I decided for the blue and in the end I think it was a good decision because the blue fits the theme really really well. For the telescope I have decided on a metallic black anthracite and painted the lens silver. The struts of the dome I finished with some copper paint which gives the whole thing a certain steampunk look and the rings of the telescope I painted with in gold metallic paint. So the tower is done, that means I can glue it to the base and add a bit more grass and vegetation here and there and with that I should be finished. After I glued the tower to the base I covered the gap with some glue and more grass flocking to create a seamless transition between the meadow and the tower. I planted some small bushes here and there and finished the whole thing with a little red flower. And by that my little dice tower diorama is done.